try that again? Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, do you give piano lessons? Not after that one. Boy, I... that's hard, you know, to come in and not warn you just play that. <sighs> Composing now. Right. Mademoiselle Cologne. Right. That was a play for a little history lesson. Mademoiselle Cologne was a play that Jean Henri wrote uh, many years ago and would not give the rights to some of our major composers and lyricists because he hates American musicals. How did you, as someone who's really never had anything on before, get it? In 1968, I was in a show called Your Own Thing as an actor, and the boy playing Sebastian, Albert Harris, his name was, came to me and said, there's this musical, that this play, Mademoiselle Cologne, which would be perfect for your music. It hurt some of my stuff. And he said, what I'd like to do is try a little workshop using some songs you've already written. Just try it out. And we did, and it was very successful. So we said, Let get, let's get the rights, you know, and uh, it was impossible. We couldn't get to the agents, we couldn't get to Henri. Finally, we wrote letter after letter and telephone calls to London, because Henri's got agents in London. This was over a two-year period. This is a two-year period, right. And finally, the agent says, look, I'm coming to New York to see Henri's Waltz of the Toreadors, and I will listen to your score on the condition you never call or write me again. <laughs> <laughs> so we said, fine, we'll do it. So the agent came, and he heard the music, and he really liked it a lot, and he said, I think we can convince the old man this time. And he went back to London, and he said, send, uh, Henri says he'll hear a tape. And we said, no tape, we've got to play it live, or it's no go. And uh, he said, live, and that went on for another six months. Finally, Henri said, no, I will not hear it unless it's a tape. So we sent Henri a telegram saying we're arriving at his house on November 30th. <laughs> Henri says, I'll meet him in Geneva. <laughs> so, I wouldn't let you in my house either, I don't blame him. <laughs> So Al and I just said, all right, it's Geneva, here we come. <laughs> and uh, how are we going to get there? We don't have any money. So we had to get a producer. So we started playing it around, and Steve Beckler, who was uh, co-producer, uh, associate producer, I mean, of Irene, he lent us the money, and we went over to it, and we played it, and on we arrived, and we were jet-lagged, and we slept, overslept, and we woke up, and there he was, and there, you know, and it was just one of those incredible things. And he couldn't speak or understand a word of English. However, he could understand English if I'm speaking in a better Italian accent, that he would know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm a talker to him and tell him I like this, how nice are my choice. <laughs> And him and know that my metallic. Michael, you talk so fast sometimes I don't understand you in any language. You said we're running late. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, then let's get right into some of Mademoiselle Cologne. Mademoiselle Cologne, okay, goodbye. I don't need you anymore. Oh, thanks. So. <laughs> Mademoiselle Cologne is a simple story about a boy and his mother. It happens to be about a boy who hates his mother. She is a superstar in turn of the century French theater. Uh, at one point, he marries a flower girl, moves away, runs away from home, and then decides it's his duty to go into the army. So he decides it's his mother who's going to take care of his, his wife. Uh, the scene opens with the most wonderful actress, Miss Nancy Andrews, who was seen in uh, Sid Caesar's Little Me. Uh, the last time I saw her was two days ago on a Shake and Bake commercial. She is, <laughs> she is, she plays Madame Alexandra this wonderful, elegant, fabulous star, whom her son Julian has just dumped his wife in her lap. He leaves, leaving his wife, and Madame Alexandra tells Cologne, well, now that he's gone, you've got to take yourself a lover. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Nancy Andrews is Madame Alexandra. Cologne, here's to husband. To lovers, to men. Here's to the lovers who brightened my days. When I was young, there were plenty. Wine always helps me to focus my gaze. Back on the time I was 20. Drink to the men, toast them again. Why stick to one when a girl can have ten? An amorous diet demands some variety. Here's to the woman with more than one man in her life. I was unsettled at 30 odd years. Not sure of where I was heading. Bravely exploring romantic frontiers. Winning my wedding. My wedding. Drink to the men, toast them again. Why stick to one when a girl can have ten? If love comes a cropper, depart with his property. Here's to the woman with more than one man in her life. When 
I am 50. I'm looking ahead. I can assure you with candor. Hair that is graying and middle-aged spread won't keep this goose from the gander. mother comes on and he says to her mother I feel so desperately lonely you will always be lonely always because you never think of anyone but yourself <laughs> you think I'm the selfish one the really selfish people aren't those who insist on having good times they're not dangerous they don't take any more than they give they know only too well you say hello to me I say hello we both know how little it means. We pass each other by, we pat each other's hand. No grabbing, no holding, no scenes. But the dangerously lonely like you, like you, think that nothing is real but their pain. tried everything I knew how. But you did not know how. You never will. I say goodbye to you. You say goodbye to me. There won't be another hello. We'll shake each other's hand. We'll pass each other by. No grabbing. No holding. Just so. And it's back to the army for you, for you. Where all pleasure is punished like crime. Then Georgie and I would be happy to cry. But it's late in the evening and I'm in the mood for a drink. And the heartwarming clinking of glasses, the taste of good times. Oh, 
Georgie, don't lie. What they say when I die, she was fun to be with in her prime. Not too good, not too rich, but the lively old bitch and her friends had a I love that show. Like, you did the reading. Michael, come join us quickly. You're playing out a club called Riverview. Riverview. And that's all I'm going to say to you. Okay. Because I'm not.